Welcome to another edition of the Watching Adams podcast. My name is Danny Ledoni. We're here today with Calvin Moreau, who is a veteran of the U.S. Air Force. He experienced a period of homelessness, but also has a background in engineering and has gone on to do manual labor and some of his own small business work. He enrolled at Adams State University as a half-time student and has taken a variety of courses there during his time in the San Luis Valley. However, in today's podcast, he describes how on multiple occasions he was stopped by Adam State University police for the suspected crime of being a drug dealer or some other allegation. Calvin felt profiled and no longer feels safe and secure being on the university campus and is now considering completing his degree elsewhere as a result. Please join us for this edition of the Watching Adams podcast. My name is Calvin Moreau. Arrived in Alamosa as a homeless veteran, and I went through La Puente's homeless program for veterans, and now I'm working as a journalist for La Puente Home. I managed to start my own business in town, and I've met a lot of uh, business people. I'm a member of the Chamber of Commerce and the Community Action Agency, and I've managed to establish myself in Alamosa and have a good reputation here. And like Danny Ladone, I have a good reputation. I've done nothing illegal or wrong. And I have a following of people who actually love me, just awesome. like Danny. Awesome. And I understand you're a veteran as well. Can you talk for just a minute about, um, about your service? Well, yeah. I joined during the Vietnam War, dropped out of high school, and spent four years in the Air Force, in the Aerospace Defense Command. I had secret security clearance. When I got out, I got married. My mother died, left me a slight inheritance. And I used that to go to the University of New Orleans where I was working on an engineering degree using my electronics training from the Air Force as a basis. That ended after about two years when President Reagan decides to cut the Pell Grant funding for uh, veterans drawing a GI Bill. That kind of discouraged me from going to college. So I spent years after that doing manual labor and eventually discovered self-employment and homelessness. <laughs> <laughs> so here you are uh, in Alamosa now, um, a long time, or at least a recent community member. When did you move here? Oh, 2010. Okay, so you've been here just over five years, yeah, about that? a little that. over five years. Great. Well, uh, you know, we met a number of times over the years at different events and functions, and um, I created a video for you for the, um, for the, the green hempery, Elf, elf crap hemp Green three. Matter LLC. Green Matter LLC. Right. Thank you for helping me out with the name. Um, so yeah, full disclosure, Calvin and I have known each other for a while now. We've collaborated on um, a number of projects and initiatives here in the community. Um, I, I most recently saw you out gleaning potatoes in one of the fields with a group of volunteers for the food bank. So this is someone who puts their community um, actions where they're where their mouth is. He's someone who very much is involved in making Alamosa a better place. So I understand that you've been a student at Adams State and that you had some experiences while you were on campus that, that were upsetting for you? Well, yeah. Uh, last uh, spring semester, actually, I enrolled business management. So naturally, I had to dress uh, business casual to feel comfortable in it. The incident that um, actually not only annoyed me, but made me nervous for even being on the campus was being randomly carded at least i thought it was random for um not appearing as a normal college student what um, happened what, what happened? well I was, I was standing outside the student union taking one of my normal smoke breaks tobacco and um a police officer comes up to me while i'm having a conversation with one of the uh, workers at the sodexo cafeteria yeah the cafeteria mm -hmm. He comes up to me and pulls me aside, just like customs would do at an airport, and cards me. He asks me um, first if I'm a college student, and I said yes. And he says, do you have any ID? I showed him my ID. What ID did you show him? I showed him my, um, my university ID. Mm -hmm. So then he hands it back, and I ask him, why are you questioning me? And the first thing he says is that you didn't look like a college student. And I thought about asking him what a college student actually looks like. So I hate to ask the typical victimization question here, but what, what were you wearing at the time? I was wearing my hemp clothing, actually. 
slacks, a nice shirt, and a vest, and my felt hat. But you didn't look like a normal college student. Well, actually, I had a couple of college students ask me if I was a professor on the university. Yeah. You know, if, in all fairness, I often would get mistaken for a student, so unfortunately really? that cut, cuts both ways. <laughs> I think because you're older and I'm mm -hmm. younger, there are assumptions made. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, what, what bears mentioning here is that, you know, Adam State is a community-friendly university, or at least it's supposed to be. And there are many, many non-traditional students who, you know, have families who are veterans or, you know, otherwise involved. Um, and, you know, that, that certainly doesn't mean that you being an older individual, not college student age, quote unquote, would necessarily, you know, fit that description. Um, but so go on. He, he asked you, if you're a student, you produced your student ID. There was apparently an anti-drug campaign going on on the campus, and they were profiling people as drug dealers. Local people from the community were coming onto the campus and selling drugs, is what he told me. What it looks like to me is that he was assuming that I fit the profile of a drug dealer, because I was an older student, or an older man, standing on the campus, and he naturally assumed that I must have been someone from the community, maybe even some homeless guy that had just shown up and was trying to sell some drugs or something. Um, did you get his badge number, or did he leave you with a card, or were you able to follow up in any way? No, I just let it go. I didn't want to have any dealings with the police at the time. And, and you said that was one incident, but it sounds like there was also Well, another. prior to that, over the years I've been using the um, university library to do research and reading material like any other community member would do. Sounds a little dangerous to me, but okay, go on. Right. I could have been a terrorist, but <laughs> who knows what I could have been plotting. I mean, I'm a member of the community. You can't trust people in Alamosa. Only um, out-of-state students, I guess, can be trusted. So I'm standing outside the library taking a smoke break with my pipe as usual, smoking my tobacco, standing beside my bicycle, and a police officer from the university comes up and asks me if that's my bicycle. And I looked at him, you know, kind of curiously and said, why? You, you committed the cardinal sin of asking a police officer why. Right. Okay, so what happens next? He said, oh, uh, he was apparently trying to start a conversation, so he says, the, oh, it doesn't matter. But then he says, uh, what is that you're smoking in your pipe? I told him, tobacco, of course. He sort of blew it off after that. But my feeling afterwards is that I, that was my first occasion of being profiled on the university campus. He asked you if your and, mic was registered? Well, yeah, that was, that was one of the problems with the whole conversation. To me, he was, I felt like I was being accused of stealing someone's bike. I mean, I ride my bike all the time. If someone asked me, and if an officer asked me if my bike were registered, I'm not sure I would know how to answer that question because I didn't know that I was required to register. Mm -hmm. Do I go to the DMV to register it? What was he even Well, asking? at registration, they suggest that you register your bicycles to, in case they're stolen, you know, there's more chance of finding it that way. Do you get some kind of a serial number that you put on it? How would you identify it? Serial number. Okay. And maybe they put a university sticker on it. I'm not Same sure because I never did bother to get it registered. Okay, right. <laughs> but I didn't know it was a reason to be questioned by an officer if it's been registered or not, if it's See, not a requirement. So you've been questioned on campus by police officers a number of times because of some description that they think you fit or just this general hunch they have that you're dealing drugs or using drugs or something like that. I'm not the only one. I've heard it from a a couple of people. I work at La Puente and I have um, conversations with homeless people there. And there have been homeless people that use the uh, library there who've been through even worse situations. One of them was even, he went there after dark thinking that the library was open and it wasn't. So immediately the police show up and wonder and question him for why he was there and suggested, of course, that he stay off the campus after hours. And just little intimidation things like this. So I'm going to get to the, the heart of the matter, which is having had this happen several times, including when you were a student, you produced your ID to demonstrate that. How does it make you feel when you go to campus? Uh, how, what's the experience like when you set foot onto campus now, given that you've been repeatedly, you know, stopped and, and questioned by police? Well, if people have ever been questioned at an airport, they know how I feel. You feel nervous. You feel like you're being watched. And you, of course, have no clue why. And that's about it. It's, it's the nervousness. It's a distraction. 
It's not helping students at all, and it's not helping security. While they're looking at local residents who don't have any criminal record, there are students who are actually committing crimes on the, on the campus. So, I mean, what would you say to a member of the ASUPD who would say, well, you know, we've had major drug busts, we're trying to keep the campus safe, and we regret that Mr. Moreau was, you know, questioned at this time, but that this is part of a, an ongoing effort to keep our campus safe, and as the president has stated, you know, safety is our number one priority. Not academic freedom, <laughs> not education, not freedom of speech, but it's safety first. Well, with attitudes like that, I would suggest that people use online universities because apparently there is no academic atmosphere in a state of paranoia. It does seem difficult to, to be on a heightened state of alert and also feel comfortable learning in a classroom or in a library or just on campus. What are things like with you and Adam State now? Do you go there still? You know, what's kind of the aftermath of this? Well, yeah, I still use the university library and I have to go there in person to pay my bill for that semester. And I have an opportunity now to return next fall. But after all this controversy over it, I'm really debating whether I would want to um, be involved in a university that is with such poor leadership. I mean, if, if the faculty can't even feel safe on a university, how in the world can students focus on their education? What do you mean when you say feel safe? Because some people would cite the banning of Danny Ladoni from campus as a means of making the campus safe because people felt threatened by him. And now, you know, faculty and staff should feel safe and not less so. You seem to think otherwise. Well, from what I've seen of this whole Danny Ladoni case, it's not criminals that you need to watch for. It's the actual leadership of the university. They're the ones who would threaten your education at the school. And apparently they would even threaten your employment if you're employed there. Or they would threaten your chances for employment. What I'm seeing in Daniel Ladone's case here is that what, what he's facing is a, that has been in place for who knows how long, decades. And old cultures, especially whether it's a huge corporate enterprise or a university, are tough to deal with. Any kind of complaints you have against the established order is going to put you in dire straits. So just like my walking onto the campus now, feeling like I'm being watched, not feeling comfortable that I'm actually at a place where I'm welcome. Well, you're being profiled, that's clear. Well, yeah. What gets me is that all it would take is some false charges to sabotage my career plans and waste a lot of the state's money and the public's money on my education. If I was banned from the university for some profile issue, there goes your tax money wasted. So if they get to listen to this podcast, what would you tell the board of trustees, the administration, others who make these kinds of decisions about, you know, the police force and policies at Adam State? I would suggest that they look at themselves in the same position that a corporation would. The CEO of a corporation would probably try to clean up the act and make themselves more um, visible and transparent. That's the way you gain your trust back. Hiding behind lies, trying to cover up problems or even inefficiency is not helping matters at all. All it's doing is building up mistrust among the faculty and even the students now. I mean, you would think the president, especially a new president of a university, would understand these things and try to clear it up. But what I see is a president who's trying to keep her job by doing what the good old boy network has been doing for decades. And what would that be if you could name it? They're trying to hold on to their whatever culture they've established. They don't want people interfering with what they're doing, whether it's what they're doing is right or not. I mean, for an institute of higher learning, it sounds like they're damaging their reputation. And if I had a student in the university right now, I'd be really wondering if I would rather, I mean, if I had a child who was a student in the university, I'd be really wondering whether I would, I'd be looking for another university with a competent president and staff. Um, are you working toward graduation or a degree, or where are you at with your own student status? Well, that's my goal, is actually to get at least a two-year degree. So right now, what I'm doing is I'm looking for a, an online university. I'm also paying off my student debt from the 80s. I'll be looking for an online university so here or you another are, physical university. Yeah, so here you are in Alamosa, but you're, it sounds like you're not going to choose to go back to Adam State 
and you're looking at an online university instead, is it because of what we discussed about the, the police contact issues, or is there another reason that you're not choosing to go back to Adams? Well, yeah, that's the basic reason. I mean, if you can't feel comfortable on a campus, why be there? It's not like I'm desperate that that's the only university in town. Right. I mean, in a world we're entering where you can get your degree from anywhere, you know, why would you choose to go on a physical campus where you're repeatedly stopped by well, police? Well, that's, that's another point you brought up, is that the, um, the trend right now is to move towards online educations, and universities, are, their role is falling behind now. Their role is essentially going to be just a physical presence, presence for maybe one year or semester to complete your online classes. So the old four years at one particular university idea is going the way of the old 20 years retirement at one business. Sure. Well, there's certainly a lot to talk about with regard to um, online and, and physical classes. I, for one, hope that you continue being able to go to community events and the university library and whatnot. Uh, and it's, it's, it's a real shame that, that you have been you know, repeatedly stopped by police um, for your appearance. Uh, and it sounds like little more than that. Well, Calvin, thank you for joining us today. You're welcome, Danny. And good luck. Thank you. And stay out of trouble. I'm trying, man. I'm trying. <laughs>